Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. So this is a highly requested video based on the fact that I spoke about this many, many moons ago, many, many videos ago, back in the day, earlier on in my career, and I never really got to telling the story. And if you watch my channel, after a few seconds of me talking, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Y'all seen the thumbnail? Craziest things I've seen guys get caught with in prison during shakedowns. When people come in your cell, they get to flipping stuff, looking for stuff, x-raying stuff, metal detecting stuff, looking for this, looking for that, looking for contraband, all the little stuff you got hidden, trying to catch you slipping, and they catch you. Now, we go on annual shakedowns in prison, which means every few months, usually it's like every six months, we'll go on a major lockdown. The whole institution locks down. Every single person. Nobody's moving. That's it. They bring in inmates from another camp, from a work center, to run the chow hall, make the food, and do this and do that. But you don't see them. We are in our cells for an extended amount of time while they come through and sell by sell by sell. They search. Now, after years and years and years, and that's not to mention just the everyday regular shakedowns, but after years and years and years of being a part of this, saw guys get caught with some uh, crazy things. Some of it's, uh, I'm debating, I'm debating, I'm really debating, on making this a two-part story today, because there's two things that come to mind when I think about craziest things I've seen guys get caught with, and I've done videos like this before, but I've never spoke on these two things. I spoke on one of them, but I didn't get into the story, but I'm debating on talking about the second. That's what we're doing today, some of the craziest things I've seen inmates get caught with on shakedowns. Now, keep in mind... The prison I did the majority of my time in, Google it, Greensville Correctional Center, Jared, Virginia, is now back in the news because they got guys laid out, gone, no longer with us. No disrespect towards them or to the families. I'm sure it's a terrible loss, but prison is no playground. I'll get into a little bit more on what I think about it, the news clipping, the crazy things that inmates have gotten caught with that I've seen personally. I've heard of much worse, but I'm just going to go off of what I've seen personally. And you know what? No more rambling. No more talking. You know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. So let's relive it. There are a lot of places to hide stuff in prison. But the most common places guys are going to hide it are going to be in their cell. You hide it out in the day room. Somebody else comes across it. He's going to take it. Now you got to go get it back. All this can be avoided if you just... Uh, Put it somewhere close by. But when putting it close by, if they find it in that cell, either you or your cellmate are going to jail. You want to go to jail or you want to go home? You're going to jail. And you, how are you going to jail? You're already in prison. They're going to put you in the hole. You're going to go back to court. And you're going to get more time added on. The place I was at, over the years, I've seen a lot. A whole lot. More than I wish I had saw. Now, what I'm going to start off with is... Just by giving you some news. Just so I can set the, pretty much the platform. So I can set the stage. You can hear it from them. You ain't got to hear it from me. Just listen to them and you'll understand just exactly how much stuff goes in this place. How much stuff is being distributed. And the severity of everything that comes with it. Let me get my stunners back on. There we go. Just days after two inmates at Greensville Correctional Center are confirmed to have no longer been alive. The prison has announced an inmate has been found to be in possession of several different types of contraband, ranging from tobacco to fent. The contraband is said to have been found during a search of the facility Thursday, November 2nd, while the prison was on lockdown, which began Monday, October 30th. During the search, the inmate was found with tobacco, 8 to 10 grams of fent, 1.5 ounces of meth, 100 to 150 suboxone strips, 15 grams of THC oil, and two doses of LSD and a partridge in a pear tree. That's a whole lot of stuff for one man to be holding on. But I'd be lying if I said that was the most that I'd ever seen anybody be in possession of. It's not. I've seen way, way more. Can you see? In early October, an employee at Greensville Correctional Center was found not alive in her car, parked in the prison parking lot. State police said that while her not being alive does not appear to be suspicious of nature. An investigation into the situation is ongoing. A Greensville correctional officer told the news in September that staffing concerns are to blame for many recent issues inside the facility, including people not being alive, cell block fires, lockdowns, and escaped inmates. 
All right, so here's what I know, and I know this to be true. To date, this year they found six inmates, six, you know, one through six, no longer with us, no longer alive, and that's just from the, the Fent thing, from guys trying to pass their time by getting high. Now, there have been other people lose their lives behind things that are probably very closely related, owing oh, money. You don't want to get in there and start owing people money, and if there's that much of that stuff floating around, all types of dudes that owe money. And if he owes you money and he's not trying to pay you money or he's got that dope fiend larceny with him and he's trying to run game on you, you got to go collect that or send somebody to go collect that. And if you do not, what kind of sends a message to everybody else that might owe you thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars that uh you ain't going to do nothing? Well, he ain't pay you, so I ain't about to pay you. That's how it goes. Let me say this. Some of the most common things I've seen while there that came in from the streets, I'll give you the top three. I think number one, without a shadow of a doubt, would be tobacco. Tobacco was just everywhere. Even after they took it out of the prison, they stopped people from smoking, and it was no longer sold on canteen, effective 2010. It was around. And you know how it was getting in. Guys were bringing it through the VI. The guards were bringing it. Like, any way you could think of, it was coming in. Number two, tree. <laughs> Old Mary Jane. Everywhere. It was nothing. I could go out myself, walk a couple cells down, but hey man, let me let me get that seven grand. Let me get that cold oil for you. And if he didn't have the right price I wanted, there was a whole bunch of different people I could go to. And number three, phones. Phones became so common that there'd be times you'd just be chilling, you hear somebody's phone ring like, damn, they tripping. These phones just ring, which is also gonna play a part into today's story. Now y'all know how this stuff gets in. In recent years it's been drones, they've been doing this, doing that, but the main two ways it's coming in, and I'm not telling, it's known, if you think it ain't known, you're in the wrong genre, because this is just known, I mean, people go to jail every day for it, the visitation room, I've had visitors get locked up and taken to jail, I've been locked up, and put in a hole for you, and just, it's all bad, don't do that, somebody's trying to get you, don't take nothing into the prison, you're eventually going to jail, don't. You tell them, hell no. I'll send you some commissary money. Now I'll put some money on your books. I'm about to send you what? I'm out here taking care of these kids by myself. Now you want me locked up too? You want me just to drop the kids off at social services? Because no, it's not worth it. So what? I'm going to make a little bit of money. I, that ain't even going to cover my bail when they find out I've been bringing that type of stuff into the institution. Number two, guards. Them guards. These dudes and women, they're overworked at times. You're talking 12 to 16 hour shifts. By that 15, 16 hour, they're tired. Question it. Is it even worth like coming here, the benefits and the, the pay I make? Man, I ain't really making that much money. And then somebody comes up and approaches you. Hey, what's up? You trying to make some money? No, I ain't, I ain't try, you trying to make some real money. I'm talking about all I need you to do is swing by my people's house and, and pick something up and make sure it gets to me. And every time you do that, when they hand you that bomb, they hand you that pack, they give you that thing to bring to me, they're going to hand you $500. We can do this three times a week. That's $1,500. That's, that's more than what you make in two weeks. You down? And for a lot of them, they're going, hey, Sarge, we got an idiot down here. I need you to come lock up. Yeah, we should possibly beat him up as well. He's Yeah, he's trying to get me to break the law, and I don't want to go to jail. And to a lot of them, they... Mm, child support, car payment. We ain't got nothing but butter and expired mayonnaise in the refrigerator. Damn, the new 11's just dropped. Jeezy got a new album. I can't even buy that. Man, what you talking about? Give me the number. And the next thing you know, boop, boop, boop. They meeting up with auntie. Meeting up with your brother. Meeting up with your homeboy out in the free world. And hey, here, take this. Yeah, it's wrapped up good. You'll make it through. And he makes it from point A to point B. Here he is, dropping it off to you. Which brings me to the first thing that I saw somebody get caught with that just kind of blew my mind. It did not make sense to me when I seen the man get caught with it. But looking back on it, like right after he got caught with it, everything started to make sense. I'm not going to lie, there were times I was like, what was that? Hey, did you hear that? What was that? Am I going crazy? Like, there were, there were telltale signs that he had something. I just couldn't be sure. Now, as I told y'all, we do these shakedowns. We do these lockdowns. They do these, just come in and tear your cell up. I hate them. Two things I hate most about it. Number one, being locked in that cell. Go lock yourself in the bathroom and stay there for the next six days. Take everything out but the toilet and the sink. 
that's a lockdown. Now, I want you to get, grab a bunch of small things you want to have while you're in that cell. Right before I come into that bathroom, you get to hide them somewhere. You're going to find some crazy places to hide them. Now, I'm not talking like that. I'm not putting nothing there. Some guys do, though. It's, it's, it's crazy. I'm not doing that. That's not my thing. But these lockdowns, they're very common. Somebody gets poked up. They don't know who did it. They're going to lock everybody down, come looking for a weapon, come looking for signs of any of the fluids that came from that man's body, that red stuff, that Kool-Aid, that, you know, that cerebral, trying to see if any of that's on your clothing. They're going to look for signs of damage. Guys will cut themselves at times with mishandling knives. And they're most importantly going to look for the knife. But while doing that, they are looking for everything. They're looking for gang literature. They're looking for contraband. They're looking for everything from rip sheets to razor blades to you name it. And they go in every single nook and cranny. So let's flash back. I'm laying in my cell one night. Got my TV on. Got my earbuds in. It's late night. You've got a TV. Some prisons have them. Some don't. You can buy them. KTV. I had the old bubble. I'm laying there and I'm watching TV. Big Brother has been canceled because something else came on that night. So now I've got to wait till like 2 o'clock in the morning. I used, to, I used to hate when they re-ran Big Brother at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now i got to stay up till 2. and But I would stay up. So I'm up one night and I'm watching Big Brother and they go to commercial break and I take my earbuds out of my ear and I walk over to the toilet and I commence to release myself. I got to pee. I go to the john. Standing there, get ready to flush the toilet and I hear a noise. What type of noise was that? That was definitely some type of electronic that just made some little weird... But I don't, I've never heard that noise before. It was like a jingle. Where did that come from? First thing I do is I look up in my bunk and there he is. He ain't got no TV. He's asleep. Dude used to sleep like a... I mean, it was... Like Frankenstein, like a vampire. On straight by his side, head straight back, wrapped up tight in the sheet, and he would just be, just sleep. Bed was immaculate, like he ironed it, laid on it, and never creased it. I stand up for a minute, waiting to flush the toilet, and I'm like, where that noise come from? And what I'm doing is I'm waiting to see if I can hear it again. That's not a noise I'm used to hearing. Who has that? What is that? Where did that come from? I go over to my door. What's that noise? Where'd it go? I don't hear it again. Man, I'm tripping. I go sit back down on my bunk, stretch over to my pillow, throw one earbud in, leave one out, because I'm still curious about this noise I heard. Where did that noise come from? I don't hear anything. But by the time goes by, I get back into the show, pop my other earbud back in, I'm back to watching Big Brother. I know it's crazy to watch Big Brother in jail. What a, I'm not watching ice skating. Man, that ain't my thing. I'm not watching Mr. Rogers. That ain't my thing. No, I'm watching Big Brother, right? I get up the next morning, they call a child, my celly gets up, he goes and eats the tray they had, I'm not going, that's not my tray, that's not the food I want to eat, I'm going to make some oatmeal, hit it with a splash of peanut butter, that's my breakfast, and I'm going to go to work. He comes back from child, I ask him, I say, hey, you ain't heard no little noises around here? Man, I hear noises all the time, what you talking about? I said, not them type of noises, you're crazy, I'm talking about like, like noises, he's like, what type of noise? I don't really know. He's like, well, I can't tell you if I heard it or not. If you don't know what you heard, what it sound like? I said, it sound like a little jingle. He's like, like some keys? I said, no, like something that would come from an electronic device. Like, I don't know, a watch, a, a, a game, something, man. The noise I heard, I ain't never heard it before, but I heard it. I'm like, man, you tripping. I ain't heard no noise. I said, yeah, maybe I am tripping, man. I can't be tripping, man. Am I tripping? Am I hearing stuff? I go on to work. Go about my business. It would be another maybe week, week and a half. We locked down for lunch. Sitting there talking to my celly, he said something to me, and all of a sudden, ding, ding, I hear that noise. I said, yo, you heard that? He's like, I did. Shh, shh, shh. We both get quiet. What was it? I don't know. I heard it, though. I heard it. You heard it? Yeah, I heard it. I yelled through the toilet. Yo, 21. I'm in 20. They in 21. What up? Hey, Y'all heard that noise? Nah, we ain't heard nothing. Y'all ain't just hear a little noise, man, a little beep, 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 beep noise. Beep, 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 beep noise. Man, what you smoke? Man, I ain't, you ain't hear the noise? Now, I'm cool with the dudes in the cell next to me. Now, this is part of the Ace and Gizmo movement in the cell. Two black dudes, one from Richmond, one from Hampton. Y'all sure y'all heard, man? I'm, I'm, you, got, you got an Atari over there? Like, what is you playing with? I want to play. I'm bored. Leave it alone, Jay. Okay. I'll leave it alone. Now, I'm not a gorilla. I'm not King Kong. I'm not riding down on people, searching their cells for little things that make noises in the middle of the night. I'm not doing that. But I know they got something. But it's not my business. They ain't going to let me see it or whatever you got. Play with it. You know, 
I, I keep it moving. If I had something I wasn't supposed to have, I'm going to deny it too. You damn sure ain't going to see what I got. Look, at you got a phone over there? I don't know what he's got. And at this time, the phones were not a big thing. That was before they started making them all micro, small. Like, if you had a phone, that, that joint was just hard to hide. Not knowing what he had was three, four times as hard to hide a phone. It's crazy the things that'll get you shook down. It's usually not you. It's usually somebody else that'll get you just shook down. So now I'm sure I know where the sound is coming from. But I hear it a third time. And it's right before we go to chow one morning. Standing at the sink brushing my teeth. It's quiet in the mornings aside from somebody farting, somebody coughing, the toilet flushing. Somebody might be arguing. But it's typically quiet right before chow because everybody's waking up. Dudes are getting out of bed. They just finished counting. Get yourself right. Don't go over to chow over that dragon breath and be trying to talk to nobody. Dudes ain't feeling you with the green tongue. Trying to converse. Man, get out of my, be burning my nostril hairs, man. Don't dare ever talk to me again knowing your breath smells like Bedussie, like... Uh, but I'm standing there brushing my teeth and the noise I hear this time is not the noise I'd heard before I know what I heard this time I heard a video game I heard the opening to a video game you know when a video game comes on the noise that it makes whatever that video game may be everyone is different everyone's distinct and you know a video game when you hear one I hear it I heard it you heard that I said yeah man I heard it yeah okay somebody's got something just driving me crazy. It's got to be a phone. It's got to be a phone. They got. They be playing Tetris. Or they're playing Frogger. Yeah, I heard it too. So what? I'm like, man. I go about my business. I write it off. I'm in a world where there's not a whole lot of new stuff happening. So I'm hearing new noises. It's driving me crazy. One of the guys in the cell next to me is a chow hall worker. He worked three, four days in the chow hall. He wasn't a slave to the chow I know some guys that work seven days a week in the chow hall. They work the morning and then the lunch, and you got other inmates that work dinner time, but I heard this noise. But this one dude is a chow hall worker. And every few days, he would get up 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, and boom, head over to chow, and then he'd be off two, three days. And that would always be when I hear the noise when he's off. We go to chow one morning. I'm gone. We still got fried eggs at this time. I need that in my life. Fried eggs? Who don't love fried eggs? I mean, I'm sure some people don't, but I like fried eggs. It's much better than what they have. Some wanted Perina, grits, old potatoes. Like, fried eggs is one of the better trades. I go over there, and we're sitting down, and we look back behind the serving line, and you can see at this time they didn't have the mesh up. It was straight, strictly open. You could reach over, put hands on a chow hall work if you messed your food up, or you could dive over the window. Another reason they ended up putting that mesh up because it just... Things got hectic over time with it being so dark. You get your tray and a, a roach just runs right across the top and jumps in the grits. Dude's getting their feelings. But we're sitting there and we're eating and I look to the back of the chow hall. And there's a bunch of guards back there. And what are they doing? They're locking the lady up. Now this is a heavy set black woman from the streets. She comes inside the prison every day. She runs the chow hall, oversees the food, oversees the, the produce and the stuff coming in and takes inventory and does the inmate hours. That is her job. Initially, when they locked her up, what's my thought? Oh, she getting nasty. She back there getting her cheeks clapped. Somebody's putting it down. She going to pound town, sloppy toppy, all that. Because that was very common up there. You would see women just randomly get checked by the guards and you never see them again. Bye-bye. They're gone. We finish up our trays. They done took this lady out of there. They done took this tall black dude from the other side of the compound that also comes in each day and works this job. He signed up for it. It's his job. And he oversees the chow hall until they can find a replacement for this woman. They just walked up out of here. Now, all the rumors start. Inmate.com is bling and cling, cling, cling. Inmate.com is us talking amongst ourselves. Inmate.com is when one person says a rumor and it starts and it spreads. It's kind of like the internet. Somebody says something and other people go with it. And they grab it, snatch it, run. And now it becomes, even if it's not true, a topic. That's what inmate.com is. It's gossiping within prison. Man, she was back there. Hey, old boy was knocking her down and da da da. They done locked him up. Okay, true indeed. They did lock her up and they did lock another inmate up. Then a couple days later, we get up and it's time to go to chow. And after they clear count, the lights come on in the pod and the cell doors start cracking and popping. And dudes come out and sit down. They wait for me to call. Chow, chow, chow. And then we all exit and go to the chow hall. Stand at the door waiting for the lights to come on. Oh, Sammy Sauce said, hungry, got to go eat something, waiting. Commissary ain't been through in a minute, so I'm going to eat whatever they got over there. Rotten potatoes and all, I need to eat. Lights don't come on. Where the lights at? Hey, open the door. Pop the doors, child. Officer don't say nothing. A lot of times, that's a key indicator something bad is coming. I'm standing at the door, I'm like, oh, they just got a little delay on the lights. But I've been down a few years now. I know when the lights don't come on, 
what that means. It means we ain't coming out of our cell. It means we're on lockdown. It means they're going to come in here and they're going to start searching for stuff. Waiting, waiting. Don't no lights come on. My cellie still ain't got out of bed. I tell him, hey, get up. What's up? Get out the bed, man. Why, what's going on? I think we're on lockdown. And when you go on lockdown, you want to clean up shop immediately. I don't care if it's tattoo patterns, if you got just the smallest amount of stuff you ain't supposed to I tell him, get up. I need you to watch the door while I hide all my stuff. I'm a tattoo artist. I have a whole lot of contraband in the cell. I got bottles of ink. I got black ink. I got gray ink. I got tattoo guns. I got tattoo needles. I got all types of stuff. I got a whole entire folder full of flash work. So if you don't know what you want, dig through the folder, find you a picture. If it's this big, I'll blow it up to this big and wait, let's slap it on. He gets up and I go to my hiding spot. Now I'm going to tell you this hiding spot. And I'm only going to tell you because they know they have eliminated it. They've made it to where you can no longer get in there. And they will know if you got in there because once they found out about it, they started hitting cells and it was like every cell or every other cell. This place was packed full of stuff. I start hiding. So what you got? What you got? I told you this dude kept the bed immaculate. He didn't have next to nothing. He had, I don't, I don't got nothing. Well, give me the tattoo patterns you wanted me to put on. You don't want him to take it. Give it to me. And we wait. And then we wait some more. They come in that morning, they pass out a trace. Hey, why y'all ain't over the doors? Y'all on lockdown. For what? You'll find out about it, but you on lockdown. How long are we going to be on lock? Until we finish doing what we need to do. Take your tray, hand your cell, made his tray. Have a good day. Welcome to prison. And they roll out with a tray card. Damn, I wonder what's going on, man. Two days goes by. We still in these cells. We ain't been out. We ain't showered. We ain't used the phone. I'm just looking at his funky ass on the top bunk, and he don't talk much, so it's kind of like being in a cell by myself, except somebody's always staring at me or always sleeping and breathing heavy and dropping hair off the top bunk on me like, oh, woosa, woosa, woosa. We get up on the third day. They bring in the trays. We get our food. I pass my cell at his tray. He sits on the top bunk and eat Indian style. Got his tray in his lap. I sit down at the little countertop, pop it open, get my sport, add my little seasonings to it, make me a little cup of coffee with the stinger. I don't care if they take the stinger. I'm going to make another one as soon as they leave. It's not a serious charge. It's a stinger. Heats up water. We finish up breakfast. Everybody's mad by now from being in these cells all these days. So we're not nicely sitting the tray outside the door. No, dudes are slinging it. You got food all over the pod. You got trays everywhere. Some dudes don't eat this stuff at all. There, boom, boomeranging it. First being that tray out the truck hole, and that slop goes everywhere all over the pod. So, the guards come in, they sweep it up. Man, y'all, y'all can stay in the cell longer. Y'all keep throwing this damn food out them slots. Stop throwing the food. Somebody poof, throw a potato at them. Hey, I ain't playing with y'all. Throw some grits from the top. Hey, stop, man. They clean the mess up. No sooner they get the mess cleaned up, and they come. Here comes the men in black. Here comes them goons. Virginia's got this, this men, these men in black, and they got a gang investigator named Duke that oversees these guys. These guys, their job is to go from compound to compound with dogs, drug dogs, and they are masters at searching for stuff. Now, they take rookies with them. They take officers from the compound with them. You're either sitting in the control booth, overwatching everything, or you are somewhere helping shake down. They come in deep. 25, 30 of these people come through that door. And they start at cell one. But they did something this time I had never seen them do. They pushed this machine in. By golly, what is that machine? What could that be? I have never seen that before. And then they push in another machine. What is that machine? Looks like a Lego block with a seat on it. I'm, I'm confused. What is it? And then I start watching as they're at cell one. I've told you I cleaned all my contraband up. And I see them bring the inmates mats out. What bunk you on? Bottom, cell one. So they write one slash B. Now they know you gave them that mat. You sleep on the bottom. This is your mat. If there's anything in it, your ass is in trouble. And they go to that first machine and they take that mat and they run it through that machine. And that machine is an x-ray machine. And they hand him his mat back. What bunk you, what bunk you on? I'm on the top, one. They write a one slash T, run it through and they hand it back. Then they throw the mats to the side and they step out, cuff up. You step out nothing but your boxers, you and your celly both. They put a chair on one side door, one on the other. You sit in the chair handcuffed. He sits in the chair handcuffed. And they go in and they tear the cell up. But I'm still curious, what is that second machine? Why is that there? They tell him, get up, uncuff, go sit on the chair. Sit on what chair? Go sit your ass on the machine. You go over there, what's up with this machine? What this machine about to do to me? It's one of the weird sex machines. What is this? Sit down. It's a butt machine, about to x-ray your butt. Make sure you ain't 
Put nothing down, you know, then you ain't hit nothing in the nappy dugout. Make sure you ain't got nothing in your prison wallet. Then it's got a flat part up top where you lay your face, flip your face, lay it again, you lay it again, and it x rays the inside of your mouth to make sure you ain't swallow. It's an x ray machine for humans. Oh, they didn't step the game up. Oh, Lord, they didn't step the game up all the time. They're going about it. They don't find anything in anybody. Hey, man after man in the chair. What's what bed? What bunk? What bunk? What bunk? They don't find anything. They're finding the basic stuff you would expect. Single blade razors, out of shaving razors. Now, we use those to do arts and craft. Ain't nobody cutting nobody with that. That is one of the weakest weapons you can try to use while in prison. Go ahead and slice somebody with that razor blade if you want to. And then he, you know what I mean, pulls out the brave heart one time and tries to take you up out of here, pins you to the wall with what he's got. You better not run up on nobody with no razor blade. You will lose your life. Man, that man is going to take you. Michael, my, he, he, he going to hurt you real bad, right? But they're taking the basics. Electronics. You done bought a TV off the yard that ain't yours because you can't afford the 200 some dollars from commissary. You scrape the name off. Bring it to me. I tattoo your name on it with a tattoo gun. It looks just like it came from property. They're taking fans, CD players, pornographic books, pornographic pictures. But they're not really hitting on anything too severe. They get to my cell. Now, I was a big believer, and I was taught this by an older celly I had. Keep things neat. Keep things very, very clean. Everything organized. Before they even come in your cell, flip your mat back. Take all your cosmetics, your clothes. Put them on your bunk. Put it in a row. So everything's laid out clean and they can see it. And they're most likely not going to make a big mess of your stuff. Now, if they come in and all your stuff's piled up in a ball like a rat, are they going to tear your shit all the way up? They are going to flip this cell upside down because you done made it fun. You done made it, where's Waldo? Like a treasure trove in here. Like, I know you got something hidden with your little dirty ass. They will flip your cell upside down. They're coming out with a bunk, 20 bottom. They write 20 slash B on it. Bring your mat out. Bring my mat out. They x-ray my mat. Turn around and get cuffed. I turn around, they cuff me. They sit me in a chair. Tear my cell apart. The whole time I'm thinking, please don't look. They come on out. Are hey, you good to go in? I done did the butt chair. I done x ray my face. They take the cuffs off. We go in. We throw our clothes on. We trying to hang out in the cell in just the underwear. That's weird. It's not that type. No, it ain't that type of party. They hit the cell next to me. What bunk? 21 bottom. What bunk? 21 top. And make sure you write, and I'm, this is no joke when I'm what I'm about to tell you. The dude on the top said, hey, make sure you write 21 top on my mat. To me, that would have been a red flag right there and there. Why are you so hell bent on making sure that I recognize that this is your mat and that's not your mat? We're going to write 21 top on it. We got you. But you didn't have to tell us that. Why are you trying to tell us how to do our job? So now he's rose suspicion. He hands them their mat, they take it, and they run it through the machine. They take your mat, throw it to the side, cuff up, sit down. He sits down, they take his cellmate's mat, and they run it through the machine. Beep, 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 beep. He's just standing there, looking dumb as a bitch in the face. I already know. I know you got the little noisy thing. Beep, 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 beep. The machine beeps. I have not heard that beep all day long. Say, Sarge, we got something in the mat. Run it again. Run to the mat, beep, 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 cut it open. Hey, flip, flip out a razor like a box cutter, cut the mat straight down the middle, and then I see them come out with it, but I don't know what it is. They come out with a black device about this big. Then they come out with a bunch of little discs, little round discs. What are those? What is that? What do you have? You got a game. I want to play. What do you got? What is it? What game? What games you got? Is what I'm thinking to myself. Hey, who's on the bottom? People on top bunk looking at his cell. You know, man, he don't say it. He's cuffed, so he can't point. But you see him looking like, hey, man, you need to let the people know you sleep on the bottom. I'm 21 top. Made that clear when they took my mat. Who's on the bottom? Dude, the worst in the child hall speaks up. I'm on the bottom. What's this? I don't know. I ain't never seen that before. Stop playing. We just did mat exchange a few months ago. This is a brand new mat. That's your man. Somebody had went home and I went and got their mat. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. They found a PlayStation PSP inside his Mac with a variety of games. I didn't know what they were. I thought they were tiny DVDs. I didn't know they were Blu-rays. I didn't know what I was looking at. But I know it looked fun to play with. Like, I wanted to play with it. Well, damn, you, boy, boy, you could have rented it from you. They found his Mac PSP inside his Mac. Everybody is at their doors looking, trying to figure out what this is. The large majority of us have never seen this before. I was not on the streets for anything like that. I did not know this thing existed. What is this? And I hear another guard go, man, that dude, he got a PSP. You know how much the things cost? 
I ain't even got a PSP. He got a PSP. That's crazy. Let me see what games he got. Oh, that's the that's, that's, what? The guards are out there kind of amazed. Meanwhile, they've already got two guards in that cell shaking down. They put extra guards in there. They all over top of each other searching, 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 searching. Find a set of earbuds. And they find a charging cord that goes with it. Now, he just took these earbuds and plugged them into a CD player. She just put them in the mat. And plug the charger into the CD player that don't even work for the charger. The cord just kind of stuck in there. Hold up. Got the charger. Got earbuds. These go with that. And they haul this silly ass up out of there. We would come to find out later on that the child hall lady had been bringing him stuff. She did have a romantic relationship with another inmate. But this dude had been having her meet his people in the outside world. And they were giving her stuff to bring into him. He had been locked up a long time. Out of all the things he could have got, out of all the things to get jammed up and go to jail before a while in prison, what do you think he wanted? A PSP. Now, I'm not sure if it was his personal PSP. Maybe his mama dropped it. Oh, he did my baby his PSP. He loved playing his game. He ain't going to be home for 60 years, but take him his PSP. I don't know. I don't know if his people went and bought it from the store and said, hey, make sure such and such gets this. Yeah, he's big into gaming. Yeah, he probably won't be doing that again ever. Man got jammed up with a PlayStation PSP. Had the guards not said what it was, I'd have never known what it was. I'd have had to Google it when I got out because I had no real clue. But it just goes to show you, if you can get a PlayStation PSP in prison, then what y'all heard about that guy getting caught in the beginning of the video really ain't nothing. Now, there was some kickback on his cellmate. Other dudes felt some type of way. And hey, why you told the people to put your, you know what I mean? You're so adamant about putting 21 top on your mattress, man. Like, you made things hot for homeboy. You could say that. You could say that. But there wasn't no getting around sliding that mattress through the x-ray machine. Then I find out later from his cellmate, man, he's a dummy. You know how many times he turned that game on and didn't have the headphones plugged in? Now, if you got the headphones plugged in, the noise is going to come out and go to your ears. But if you turn it on without the headphones plugged in, then guess what? The noise escapes right into the air. And that's what I had heard them different times. Another time, he's in the middle of playing a video game and accidentally unplugs his headphones the first thing in the morning, and that would be when I heard the video game playing. Now, the dudes above us had heard it. The dudes above him up to the left had heard it. Even Will and Jingling eventually heard it. Everybody heard it. It's kind of one of the things where you just, uh, you mind your business, man. Was I curious? Yeah. Was I curious to the point that I was going to draw heat? No. Was I going to go take it? No. Like I said, I like video games. But at the end of the day, you mind your business. You get too curious, and everybody will start to think you had something to do with what happened. Now, what ultimately happened is the lady got caught. She confessed to everything. She didn't tell them who she gave it to. But she said she had brought some things into the prison and had given them not just to him, but several other inmates in the jail hall. She didn't know which buildings they lived in, but they would come find. They would come look. They would come search. He wasn't the only one to get caught with stuff. But not being sure what the other inmates got caught with, just the rumors I heard. The PSP was crazy. Why did you have that? No, not the PSP, the thing they just found under your mat. Do you know what that thing looks like? Do you know what it was shaped like? Like, why would you have your whole entire man? Where was you? We'll save that for another video. But yeah, the mysterious PSP. Now, I told y'all the DVD story that got stolen up out the library and the DVDs. And just, I have seen guys with some crazy, crazy things they got caught with. Cell phones was very normal. But here in Virginia, you get caught with a cell phone, you go to Supermax. They don't play that cell phone. You call somebody to come get you out of prison or orchestrating a drone or doing, you're not doing nothing. Get caught with a phone if you want to. I'm going to send you to a place where you don't get the phone but once every 30 days. Oh, Mr. PlayStation. Mr. Child Hall Worker, Mr. I ain't hear nothing. Should have seen the look on his face when they pulled that thing out of his mat. You ever seen a black man turn white? I said, have you ever seen a black man turn white? I have on several occasions. It's a real thing. When that fear hits you and that adrenaline hits you at the same time, white people turn almost yellow, turn pink. Huh. Dummy. All the things you could have got, you going to the PSP. Damn, I wanted a PSP too. <laughs> Video ran longer than I expected it to, but that's just the way it goes. It happens. That is one of the craziest things I've seen somebody get caught with, not even knowing what it was. 
And I've seen a lot more crazier things. Y'all heard the, why did you have that? You know what that was shaped like? You know what the thing looked like? Why was that even? Come on, man. We cool. I didn't know you was doing stuff like that. I'll save that for another time. It is Tuesday. Tuesday, November the 7th. As I record this, it's roughly 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. Dropped my little boy off to school this morning. Stopped and grabbed coffee for me and the wife. I'm back here at the crib, just did a load of laundry, did a little fishing as soon as I got home, making this video. Now I'm going to get into edit mode. Stay tuned. More stories coming real soon. And if you're new to Jay Williams' Let's Live Life, make sure you hit that subscribe, that like. And as always, I appreciate y'all. Without y'all and this whole YouTube world, there would be no me. And most importantly, don't go to prison, don't break the law, and don't do stupid things that can get you taken up out of the free world. I'm guilty of doing it. I'm not the smartest of time. Don't do as I do, do as I say. But anyways, these streets, these these prisons, these jails, these electronic devices. Boy, I had a whole entire PSP with a whole bunch of guys. They're all just crazy world inside of a already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. And to all my real ones, and the awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Now y'all know how we do. Salute.